I welcome you all to the session of thermal engineering basic and applied and today we shall continue our discussion on the critical pressure ratio and finally, we shall try to discuss about the physical significance of critical pressure ratio essential in the context of nozzle flow and the design of flow nozzles. So, if we try to recall in the last class, we could establish the expression of critical pressure ratio and though we did not write the definition of critical pressure ratio, but uh, I have tried to mention that the critical pressure ratio is the ratio of exit pressure to the inlet pressure for which mass flow rate through the nozzle per unit area is maximum. So, if we try to write the expression of mass flow rate through the nozzle per unit area and then the expression of the critical pressure ratio. So, the mass flow rate of steam per unit area m dot by a 2. Why I am writing m dot? Because from continuity we can write m dot 1 equal to m dot 2 equal to m dot. So, this is m dot 2 by a 2 that is equal to under root 2 k by k minus 1 into p 1 rho 1 and p 2 by p 1 power 2 upon k minus p 2 by p 1 power k minus k plus 1 upon k. So, this is the expression of the mass flow rate of steam through the nozzle per unit area. Right? And we also have discussed that to obtain, we also have discussed you know that mass flow rate of steam per unit area or even multiplied with this a 2 because a 2 is fixed depending on the flow nozzle exit area. What we can see that this expression, this quantity is function of p 1 rho 1 k and also the ratio of p 2 by p 1. So, for the constant p 1 rho 1 and k, the quantity m 2 by a 2 m 2 m m dot by a 2 is function of p 2 by p 1 right because you know that p 1 is also if we consider that this flow you know pressure of steam which is entering to the nozzle is constant density at that particular cross section we can assume it is constant I mean at that cross section if the density variation is not there and k is also constant then we can see this quantity is function of p 2 by p 1. In fact, that is what we have discussed in the last class. So, this quantity p, p 2 by p 1 is the pressure ratio. that is the ratio of exit pressure to the inlet pressure when there is a flow of steam through the nozzle. We also could establish the expression of the critical value of this pressure ratio which will give the maximum mass flow rate per unit area through the nozzle and through By doing a simple calculation, we also could write the 
expression of p 2 by p 1 I mean critical value equal to r and this r equal to p 2 by p 1 critical equal to 2 upon k plus 1 power k by k minus 1. So, this is the critical value of pressure ratio. So, the critical means this will give maximum mass flow rate through the nozzle. So, this will give maximum mass flow rate through the nozzle. Now, let us discuss today. So, we can see that this is the critical pressure ratio and which depends on the value of k that is the index of expansion for the isentropic process. So, when steam is you know passing through the nozzle, we have assumed that the flow can be modeled by an isentropic process and following that process we had the I mean we had tried to mathematically model the process and we, we could recall that k is there and that k is basically index of expansion for the isentropic process. Okay. Now, the you know so that means we can write when there is a flow of a compressible fluid through a convergent channel. So, when there is a flow of steam or when there is a compressible flow of fluid through a nozzle the ratio of exit pressure to the inlet pressure of this nozzle or convergent channel is known as the critical pressure uh, exit pressure of exit pressure to the inlet pressure of the nozzle for which the mass flow rate through the channel or nozzle is maximum that is the critical pressure ratio and the corresponding exit pressure is known as the critical exit pressure. So, let me write here when there is a flow or a compressible fluid flows through a convergent channel within bracket I am writing nozzle the ratio of exit pressure to the inlet pressure for which for which the mass flow rate is a maximum right right is called the critical pressure ratio right. So, in fact, so this is the critical pressure ratio for which the mass flow rate of steam through the convergent channel or nozzle is a maximum right and from this we also can write the corresponding exit pressure is called critical pressure. The corresponding exit pressure is called critical pressure or as the critical pressure. Okay. So, when if there is a convergent channel 
like this. So, this is a convergent channel and there is a compressible flow and we are assuming that there is no heat loss. So, when there is a flow through this convergent duct, we are assuming that the system is not having heat interaction with the surroundings and if this is the outlet 2 2 and this is the inlet section 1 1 and this is the direction of flow. The pressure ratio P 2 by P 1 for which the mass flow rate per unit area through the channel should be maximum and the pressure the corresponding pressure at the uh, exit pressure is the critical pressure. So, in this case 2 2 is the exit section 1 1 is the inlet section. So, the corresponding pressure at the exit that is P 2 is the critical pressure. Okay. Now, I would like to discuss a few issues in this context. So, you can see that uh, we have discussed about the critical pressure ratio that is nothing but the pressure ratio that is exit pressure to the inlet pressure right for which the mass flow rate is maximum. So, that means we are trying to have the maximum mass flow rate and we can see that mass flow rate will be maximum if the velocity is maximum. So, if we try to go to the next slide. So, mass flow rate whether it is at section 1 1 or section 2 2 say we are talking about section 2 that is rho 2 a 2 into c 2. So, we have tried to find out m dot 2 by a 2 that is rho 2 into c 2 right. Density will change with a drop in pressure right. So, that is you know modeled by that isentropic equation process equation. So, if you would like to maximize this quantity we are in process of maximizing this quantity by having a suitable design of, of the nozzle. Essentially, it indicates that we need to increase the velocity of steam at the exit of the nozzle. So, when you are talking about critical pressure ratio for which mass flow rate is maximum that means, the velocity of steam at the exit of the nozzle is rather becoming maximum. So, velocity of steam at the exit of the nozzle becoming maximum I mean it indicates that the cross sectional area should be minimum. So, if we try to look at this quantity m dot 2 is equal to m dot 1 equal to m dot. So, let me write m dot 1 equal to m dot 2 equal to m dot. So, this is fixed density will definitely fall density will definitely vary with a change in pressure, but if you would like to maximize this quantity C 2 will C 2 has to increase. Since this quantity is fixed now if we need to increase C 2 definitely A 2 should reduce. So, since m dot 2 is fixed that we can see from this quantity because we should we cannot compromise with the mass flow rate. Our objective is to get higher C 2 because the if we need to have it then A 2 will drop because objective is to get maximum mass flow rate. So, basically you know the when the nozzle is operated operate, you know nozzle is operated at this particular condition that is at this critical pressure condition and when the pressure at the exit of the nozzle is critical pressure can not we say something else. So, let me write here. So, that means we can say. So, basically it is the pressure at which the area is minimum and discharge per unit area is 
a maximum right so it is the pressure at which area is minimum and mass flow rate per unit area is maximum and that pressure is the critical pressure so critical pressure is the pressure at which area is minimum and discharge per unit area is maximum. So, this is basically and the smallest cross section cross sectional area of the convergent channel is known as throat as the throat. So, basically just we are trying to look at it from different perspective from this simple mathematical expression that the critical pressure we have discussed that the corresponding pressure is critical pressure. So, our nozzle is said to be operating or said to be you know uh, at the critical pressure condition when the mass flow rate is maximum and area is minimum. Because if we need to have mass flow rate is maximum we have seen the velocity should be maximum to obtain the higher velocity the area should be reduced. So, area should be minimum that means, this is the section where the pressure is critical pressure area is minimum and that is known as the throat of the convergent channel or nozzle. Okay. So, this is very important that means, you should keep in mind that critical pressure is the pressure at which area is minimum and that minimum area of that particular convergent channel is known as the throat. Okay. Now, let us quickly see that if we write the expression of mass flow rate per unit area. That is 2 k by k minus 1 p 1 into rho 1 p 2 by p 1 power 2 upon k minus p 2 by p 1 power k plus 1 upon k power total power half. So, this is the expression of mass flow rate. Now, this is the mathematical expression of the mass flow rate per unit area. If we try to plot, if we try to plot the mass flow rate, so say this is m dot that is mass flow rate right and this is p 2 by p 1. Why? If we go back, we have written that m dot by a 2 is function of p 2 by p 1. So, let us try to have the graphical plot of the graphical representation of this function m dot by a 2 which is the function of p 2 by p 1. What we can see from this expression? So, when p 2 equal to p 1 right. So, that means, I will be discussing three different cases. So, case when p 2 equal to p 1 this means p 2 by p 1 equal to 1. So, if we scale it from 0 to 1 say this is 0 this is p 2 by p 1 equal to 1. So, this is p 2 by p 1 equal to 1. 
So, when p 2 by p 1 equal to 1, we can see from this expression that mass flow rate is 0. So, it will start from here. So, this is 0. Right? Now, when p 2 when p 2 by p 1 that is p 2 equal to 0, this means p 2 by p 1 equal to 0. You have studied in fluid mechanics that there will not be any flow until and unless we are having the driving pressure difference. So, maybe even if we look at this particular cross section. So, this is p 2 and this is p 1. So, the driving pressure difference is delta p that is p 2 minus p 1 right. So, or p 1 minus delta p, p 1 minus p 2. So, if the pressure at exit equal to 0, there will not be any flow. If there is no flow, we cannot think even to have mass flow rate. So, it will be 0. So, this is the point when p 2 by p 1 equal to 0. So, that means, we can see that mass flow rate is equal to 0 and somewhere at the critical mass flow rate p 2 by p 1, it will be maximum. So, when p 2 by p 1 equal to p 2 by p 1 critical m dot by a 2 is maximum. So, that means, somewhere we will be getting maximum value Right. So, try to look at why the curve will have trend towards left. If we keep on you know, so when p t equal to 0, there is no flow. Right. So, these two pressures, I mean you need to reduce the pressure. So, when p t equal to p 1, there is also no flow when p 2 equal to 0 that we can see from the mathematical expression from the mathematical expression that m dot by a 2 equal to 0. So, if we try to go here that p 2 should not be equal to p 1 if p 2 is less than equal to p 1 then only there will be flow right. So, when p 2 equal to 0 then ideally we are supposed to get maximum flow rate because if p 2 reduces then it will have we will be having driving pressure difference. So, when p 2 is becoming 0 we are supposed to get maximum mass flow rate, but if we look at the mathematical expression when p 2 equal to 0 mass flow rate will be equal to 0. So, let us now plot it I will explain the physical issues later. Right. So, this is the if we give the name say this is point A, this is point B and this is point C. So, A B C that is the theoretical curve. The curve A B C that we have drawn now it is the theoretical curve. Okay. So, now try to understand that reaching at the maximum value if we further reduce p 2 and if we make p 2 equal to 0, though we are supposed to get maximum flow rate, but following this mathemat mathematical expression we can see that the mass flow rate should be equal to 0, but this is not the case that we will we'll, uh, explain this. So, before going to this particular aspect, though it is mathematically 0 that we can deny if we look at the mathematical expression, but you all have understood that if we reduce, so that means we are bringing the ratio of p 2 by p 1 from 1 to the closer to 0. So, if we reduce p 2, then we are having more pressure difference. So, we are supposed to get more flow rate, but that is not we can see that, that is not the case that we can see from this curve. 
which is verified by this mathematical expression as well. So, before going to discuss that particular part to figure out what is there, let us now look into the physical significance of the critical pressure ratio. So, now let us look at the physical significance of critical pressure ratio. So, if we start our equation from that particular equation that is d p by rho plus c d c equal to 0, right. That equation we are getting from c d c plus d h equal to 0 and we are you know using the value of d h rather we are placing we are substituting the value of d h by d p by rho from the state you know property relation T d s is equal to d h minus v d p. For an isentric isentropic process d s equal to 0. So, we can write d h, d h equal to v d p that is d p by rho. Now, in this equation, so basically what you can write? We can write integral c 1 to c 2 c d c equal to minus p 1 to p 2 d p by rho. To have the closure, we need to invoke the property relation that is we are using p by rho 1 to the power p 1 by is equal to constant equal to p 2 by rho, to, rho 2 power k. right? So, what we can do here? We can write. So, that means, we can write this is nothing but constant power 1 upon k into p 2 by p 2 to p 1 d p by p power 1 upon k. So, that is straightforward. So, from here we can write that p by rho power k equal to constant. right? So, we are using it. We can quickly go further step. So, if we perform this, that integration we can write that c 1 to c 2 c d c equal to we can write constant power 1 upon k into k by k minus 1 and then we can write that p power minus 1 upon k and that already you have taken into account. So, basically we can write this is p 1 k minus 1 upon k minus p 2 power k minus 1 upon k. right? What we can do next is k by k minus 1, we can take this constant power 1 upon k inside and this constant power 1 upon k, we can write this is p 1 into v 1 power to the power k, right? power 1 upon k into p 1 to the power k minus 1 upon k and the same constant power 1 upon k we can write like p 2 into v 2 power k to the power 1 upon k into p 2. So, this is p 2, p 2 power k minus 1 upon k. Right? So, basically we have to do some algebraic manipulation. What we can write? So, see this is nothing but k by k minus 1 and this is coming as you know p 1 into v 1. So, p 1 into v 1 minus p 2 into v 2. So, this v 1 and v 2 are the specific volume at section 1 and section 2 respectively of the stream that is flowing. So, this you know this is very easy. What we can do further is you know we can write this, we can take p 2 v 2 outside. So, k by k minus 1 p 2 v 2 and we can write p 1 sorry p 1 p 1 v 1 divided by p 2 v 2 minus 1. Right? 
So, you can understand that we also can write this like this k by k minus 1 p 2 into v 2 and this is p 1 by p 2 into v 1 by v 2. So, since p 1 v 1 to the power k equal to p 2 v 2 to the power k therefore, we can write v 1 by v 2 should be equal to p 2 by p 1 to the power 1 upon k right. So, if we write here that p 1 into p 1 by p 2 into p 1 by p 2 power 1 upon k minus 1. So, this is 1 upon k. So, if we go to the next slide, we can write that integral c 1 to c 2 c d c equal to k by k minus 1 p 2 v 2 and this is p 1 by p 2 power you know uh, here it is uh, it is p 2 sorry I have I have done one small mistake here it should be p 2 by p 1. You can see this is p 2 by p 1. So, it should be p 2 by p 1. So, just it is p. So, you know that we can write this is p 1 by p 2 into minus 1 upon k. So, if we do this p 2 into p 1 by p 2 or we can write straight away. So, this is 1 minus k minus 1 upon k or that is basically we can write 1, 1 minus 1 minus k upon k minus 1. So, this is the expression. So, what we can write here is that c 2 square minus c 1 square by 2 equal to k minus k k by k minus 1 into p 2 v 2 and this is p 1 by p 2 or we can write uh, sorry this is this is again not 1 we are trying to write it p 2. Why we are trying to write in terms of p 2 I hope you have understood because we need to relate it with the critical pressure ratio. So, p 2 by p 1 to the power 1 minus k by k minus 1. So, we are trying to have the expression of C 2 in terms of the critical pressure ratio. Till now, we have discussed about the critical pressure ratio and mass flow rate. So, the it is the critical pressure ratio, it is the pressure ratio at which area is minimum and mass flow rate per unit area is maximum right and the corresponding you know pressure at the exit is the critical pressure. So, now we, we, we would like to know what is the expression of critical velocity in terms of the critical pressure ratio right. So, we can have similar argument see you know that if it is the channel if it is the convergent channel and this is the cross sectional area 1 1 this is the cross sectional area 2 2 and what we can see that you know C 2 or C 1 is much much less than C 2 because area at 1 1 is much much higher than the area 2 2. So, definitely C 2 would be maximum and that is what the objective is of the of having this convergent nozzle. So, what we can write? We can write C 2 square by 2 equal to we can have k by k minus 1 p 2 v 2 and this p 2 by p 1 power 1 minus k by k minus 1 right. So, what would be C 2? Now, when p 2 by p 1 is equal to p 2 by p 1 p uh, p 2 by p 1 critical then C 2 also will be critical. So, let me write over here when p 2 by p 1 equal to p 2 by p 1 critical then C 2 will be equal to C 2 critical. So, what is the value of C 2 critical? So, that means C 2 critical equal to 2 k by k minus 1 into p 2 v 2 right into 
we know that p 2 by p 1 2 by k plus 1 to the power k by k minus 1 into 1 minus k by k minus 1. So, basically this is the equal to I mean not equ nearly equal to this is basically p 2 by p 1 critical. So, what we are doing we are putting the value of p 2 by p 1 critical over there and if we do one step further we can write this is nothing but 2 k by k minus 1 into p 2 v 2 and this is basically you know uh, minus so k minus k plus 1 upon 2 minus 1. So, that means this is coming k plus 1 upon 2 minus 1. So, that is nothing but 2 k by k minus 1 p 2 v 2 and this is k minus 1 upon 2. Okay. So, basically you could you try to understand we are getting. So, this is c 2 critical square. So, we can write now c 2 critical equal to under root k p 2 into v 2. What is k p 2 into v 2? So, this is the sonic velocity at the exit. So, that is basically the sonic velocity at the exit. So, basically we can write equal to corresponding acoustic velocity. Right. So, when from this particular mathematical exercise we can discuss that when exit pressure is the critical pressure rather the ratio of exit pressure to the inlet pressure is the critical pressure ratio. The corresponding velocity at the exit of the nozzle that is the critical velocity is the sonic velocity. Right. So, now let me tell you. So, when exit when the exit pressure is the corresponding critical pressure of the nozzle exit pressure is the corresponding critical pressure of the nozzle exit velocity also is the critical velocity that is nothing but the acoustic velocity at the same temperature and pressure of the flow. Okay. So, this is very important. So, now if we go back to the particular expression what we had mentioned. So, when the pressure ratio is reached at the critical pressure ratio we have mentioned that when the pressure ratio has reached the critical pressure ratio flow rate per unit area is maximum and the corresponding exit pressure is the critical pressure we have agreed upon. Now, from this mathematical exercise we have established that when the pressure is the exit pressure corresponding exit velocity is the critical velocity which is nothing but the sonic velocity of the flow at the same temperature and pressure of the medium when there is a flow. So, now question is you have seen if we go to this particular slide. So, when the velocity at the exit is the sonic velocity let me tell you one thing very important thing when the velocity at the exit of the nozzle is the sonic velocity. So, when the velocity c 2 is c 2 critical equal to sonic velocity of the media. So, if you reduce further pressure that pressure is to be sensed by the exit by the inlet section of the nozzle. So, when the pressure ratio is critical pressure ratio exit pressure is the critical pressure and from the last expression we have seen that the velocity is also the sonic velocity critical velocity that is the sonic velocity. So, when that is sonic velocity if we try to reduce the pressure further at the exit of the nozzle that information is to be sensed by the inlet section of the nozzle to increase the mass flow rate. Question is whenever there is a reduction in pressure that means, the nozzle is operating at the critical pressure ratio 
if we try to have further reduction in pressure that pressure wave should be the pressure wave the pressure wave should move to the inlet section that means that information should be you know sensed by the inlet section of the nozzle that indicates that a further reduction in pressure that pressure wave should move to the inlet section because inlet section should know that there is a further reduction in pressure at the exit section of the nozzle when a pressure wave is moving through the, uh, elas through an elastic media that moves with a sonic velocity now the question is if the flow velocity itself is the sonic velocity so a further reduction in pressure that wave will not be able to reach at the inlet section of the nozzle so and at that case what will happen you know the flow rate whatever we have seen it will remain constant so this is the m dot maximum so this is m dot maximum so this point at b which is basically this point is p2 by p1 critical right so a nozzle has reached at the critical condition a further reduction in pressure at the exit which needs to be sensed by the inlet section to increase the flow rate but that information will not be has to be carried by the has to be carried through the medium itself but since the nozzle exit velocity is the sonic velocity that we have established few minutes back that further reduction in pressure that information will not be reached at the inlet section of the nozzle to increase the flow rate and as a result the mass flow rate will remain constant and this is the experimentally measured data so this is a b and i am writing d so this a b d so this is experimental curve so this is experimental curve so try to understand though we have seen that mathematically if i reduce pressure further beyond the critical pressure so this is the critical pressure ratio and the corresponding pressure is the critical pressure if we reduce pressure at the exit beyond the critical pressure mathematically you can see that the mass flow rate should be equal to zero but the physics is that that further reduction in pressure that information should be sensed by the inlet section and to to get that information a pressure wave should move through the elastic media with a sonic velocity but already the velocity is sonic velocity so that information will not be sensed by the inlet section as a result of which the mass flow rate will remain constant and that is the experimentally observed phenomenon so very important part is i would like to write two three important points now let me write over here is that so what we can write is for a given inlet and exit pressure of a nozzle and a required mass flow rate the designer the nozzle designer has to evaluate the critical pressure first critical pressure uh, at first if the exit pressure is below is less than the critical pressure nozzle will be of convergent divergent type nozzle will be of convergent divergent type if 
if the exit pressure is equal to or above the critical pressure is equal or greater than the critical pressure right the nozzle will be of convergent type so this is very important so this is the you know conclusion of this analysis that when exit pressure so whenever someone is designing the nozzle for a given inlet and exit pressure and the mass flow rate required mass flow rate designer should first calculate the critical pressure ratio if the exit pressure is less than the critical pressure ratio then the type of the nozzle should be the convergent divergent type if the exit pressure is equal or greater than the critical pressure ratio then it should be the convergent type one important thing is so uh, what we can say again let me tell you that when the pressure is the critical pressure ratio mass flow rate through the nozzle is mass flow rate through the nozzle is maximum that we have established and at that condition our nozzle is said to be choked so when the nozzle is operating at the critical pressure ratio exit pressure is the critical pressure velocity of steam at the exit is the sonic velocity at that condition mass flow rate through the nozzle is maximum and the nozzle is said to be choked so this is very important the, this is very important question when a nozzle is said to be choked a nozzle is said to be choked when the exit pressure of the nozzle is the critical pressure the maximum mass flow rate through the nozzle is obtained or achieved and the nozzle is said to be choked so we have if we try to summarize we have discussed about the critical significance of the mass flow uh, critical significance of the uh, significant physical significance of the critical pressure ratio from there mathematically you have seen that although if we further reduce the pressure below the critical pressure at the exit of the nozzle mathematically mass flow rate is becoming zero but in experimental observation it is seen that the mass flow rate remains constant and the underlying physics we have tried to explain from the sonic velocity that is reached when the nozzle is you know operating at the critical pressure ratio. So, with this I stop here today and in the next class we shall try to solve one numerical problem on the flow analysis of a nozzle. Thank you. Mm -hmm.